welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen video. Who does number eight size nibs better, Hongdian or Jinhao? Jinhao took the fountain pen world by storm last year when they introduced the Jinhao X159 with a number eight size steel nib. They followed that with the Jinhao 9019, which also sports the same number eight size steel nib and a huge new one milliliter converter. Not to be outdone, Hongdian released its number eight size steel nib on the Hongdian N10 just before Christmas. It's taken two months of worldwide postal shenanigans, but I finally received my Hongdian N10. So let's see which is best right now. So I have a couple of packages here from China to unbox for you today. These were supposed to be here way back in the early part of December because these were new pens from Hongdian. I bought them from 365 Stationery Store on AliExpress and they put the wrong label on them and sent them to Halifax, Canada instead of Calgary, Canada. They went back to China. Get out! This was mid-December. I replaced the pens on eBay. So let's open up these two packages. I think I know what this one is. Nope, this is the, yeah, this is one Majon. This is the A3. And here is the second one. And this is one I've been very, very much looking forward to. And of course it was delayed by a month. And this is the Hongdian N10. Uh, I had ordered a blue one, and so when I reordered on eBay, everything on eBay AliExpress was sold out in the blue, so I got the red instead. And that's an ink window in there. This is a piston filler, but the cool thing about this pen is the number eight size nib. I'll show the parts and features of this pen, some size comparisons and measurements, and then provide a writing sample. But first I want to compare the nib on the N10 to the one on the Jinhao 9019 because inquiring minds want to know. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. And here are the two nibs side by side. The black one, of course, is the Hongbian and the two-tone gold is the Jinhao. These are both fine nibs. This is a spare. I've got a medium Jinhao nib in my 9019. But let's compare the dimensions of the two nibs. Here's a photo of them with their measurements. The Hongdian number 8 is 2.1 millimeters longer than the Jinhao, but the same size at the shank. The extra 2.1 millimeters in length is only significant for cap clearance. If you want to swap a Hongdian into a Jinhao or vice versa, you need to know that the nib will fit in the collar and that you have enough cap clearance so the cap doesn't grind down on the top of the nib and twist it like a pretzel. I want a pretzel too! When you swap a nib, you need to use the feed and nib collar of the pen you're swapping to. These two number eight size steel nibs swap into each other's collars, but let's pull them from the collars and you'll see that there's a difference in the feeds. So I'm using some gripping material and just pulling the two apart. So there's the Jinhao number eight size nib and let's pull the Hongdian. So the one thing you have to be aware of when you're pulling these nibs is to not lose the o-rings that are on the collar. There's a very tiny o-ring right there on the Hongdian and one back here on the back part of the nozzle of the collar. And on the Jinhao there's an o-ring right there. So the one thing to note in the Jinhao feed is that the Jinhao nib has a little notch right there that butts up against that little nub. Tiny black on black nub right there. And if you try to swap the Hongdian onto the Jinhao feed, it's going to sit up higher on top of that little nub. And so it's going to be a lot tighter to get it into that Jinhao collar. And you might never get it out again. So if you're going to do this, you're going to use the Hongdian nib on a Jinhao, then you're going to want to maybe file that down a little bit so that it is flush with the rest of the feed. That'll allow that nib and feed to fit into that Jinhao collar a little bit better. The reverse, here is the Hongdian Ebonite feed, and there is no bump to place the nib on the feed, but just line it up as normal, right up to where those shoulders meet, 
and then push it into the Hongdian collar. It's going to be a fairly tight fit. Whenever you pull these nibs and feeds out, make sure, even when you're putting the original back, let's put the original Hongdian back in its collar. You need to make sure that you push it all the way in as far as humanly possible. That way that dimension will be the same. If it's sitting out a little bit, you're going to be running into the cap clearance issue and maybe grind your nib into dust inside the cap. Let's fit the Jinhao back in again. It fits a little bit easier. So I measured the distance uh, from where the cap edge ends over the barrel when the pen is capped from that place right there to the top of the section. Then I measured the inside of the cap from the top of the cap to the edge of the cap ring and subtracted that from the previous measurement. That gave me the cap clearance for that pen. Then just screw the collar with the new nib into the section and measure the distance from the top of the section to the tip of the new nib and see how much clearance remains. So the bottom line is with the cap clearances of both pens, both of these nibs are swappable with each other. Which is best will be determined by how well they write. Let's look at the Hongdian N10, and when we get to the writing sample, I'll compare how the two nibs write. Overall, the N10 is a relatively heavy metal pen, weighing in at 35 grams. It is roughly the size and shape of a Parker Duofold Centennial. Here it is with my Jinhao 100 Centennial. You see that my N10 is just slightly longer, but the N10 is a piston filler. The top finial and the bottom blind cap are anodized aluminum. The cap and barrel might be the same material, but it has been given some kind of a treatment. I'm suspecting a laser treatment that gives it a moiré pattern that gives it a barber pole effect when you turn the pen. The pattern is extremely small and I'm not sure that you'll be able to see it even when I get up really, really close. And there are two bands that run the length of the cap and the barrel and they line up that do not have the pattern on it and are shiny. And the surface of the pen is smooth, almost slick in the hands. From the top, we see a three-stepped top finial that has a slightly domed top layer, which has a thin metal band adorning it. And then the two further layers, each of which is curved slightly. It's a fairly intricate bit of design that comes out looking very simple and elegant. I'm rather impressed by the attention to detail here, especially that it remains very subtle. The finial is followed by a knurled band that holds the teardrop-shaped clip in place, and the clip is nicely springy and usable. All the trim on the N10 is, I think, ruthenium. It wasn't advertised as such, but it certainly looks very similar to the ruthenium trim on my Leonardo Supernova. The cap is straight to a wide cap band, that has some really nice patterns on it. The top and the bottom of the band have a coin-like reading, and the center has a spiral pattern. The three portions of the band are raised in convex curves. The center band has a cartouche that has Hongdian N10 stamped into the center. There's a very small step down to the barrel, which tapers away very slightly, about 0.5 millimeters over the length to another raised and knurled band that separates the blind cap from the barrel. And there are two small round ink windows that line up with the clip. Very nice. The cap unscrews with one and a half turns to reveal a tapering milk bottle shaped section of the same material as the cap and the barrel. And here is the number eight size steel fine Hongdian nib and black ebonite feed. The nib might be ruthenium plated, I don't know. Ruthenium is an element on the periodic table of elements and was discovered by a Russian scientist in 1844 and named in honor of Russia. I don't see the word used in any of the retail advertising for Hongdian. The section is very slick, so it's a good thing there's a small flare towards the end. Let's get a closer look at this nib. Black on black, so it's a little bit difficult to see the pattern, but there's the typical Hongdian swirly pattern on the nib. Hongdian, F for fine, and since 1997. The nib and feet are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for swapping or maintenance. The inside of the cap shows a black plastic liner that seals the nib from evaporation. The cap posts right on that piston knob and makes the pen much too long and back-weighted to write with. I'll characterize this pen as not postable. 
but unposted, the pen is very nicely balanced and comfortable in the hand. I will say that the number 8 size nib looks visually odd. It looks out of proportion with the rest of the pen. On the Jinhao 9019, the number 8 size nib looks proportional and well balanced visually, but not so much with the N10. The shoulders of the nib are actually wider than the top of the section, which I think just makes the pen look awkward. I find it a surprising contrast to the elegance of everything else about the design of this pen. And here is the Hongdin N10 with a Hongdin N11. Now those sections are almost the same size, the N10 being slightly bigger, but don't you think that the N10 would look better with one of those black number six size Hongdin nibs than the number eight? I bought this pen on eBay for $29.99 US. It's available in three colors, blue, red, and green, and in only one nib option, fine. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Hongdin N10 with a Hongdin N11, a Hongdin N12, a Hongdin N13, no, a Pelican M800, and a Jinhao 9019. The Hongdin N11 and the 9019 from Jinhao are both cartridge converter pens, while the others are piston fillers. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted, thems that post. The Hongdin N12 doesn't post very well at all, but it actually goes on. It won't stay on. The Pelican M800 and the Jinhao 9019 post very nicely. The Pelican being, of course, the best at that. I really hope that Hongdin doesn't go into the mail business because they don't know how to post anything. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. You can see that the N11 is much longer than any of them. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Hongdian N10 piston filler, and it has a number eight steel nib. Let's check the wetness. It's really wet and very, very smooth with feedback. And this nib is a fine. And the ink is Ferris Wheel Press. Cabernet by the Lake, which is a really pretty reddish magenta ink that shimmers pink. And the line that this nib makes is 0.5 millimeters, which makes it a Western fine or a Japanese, that was me missing the page, fine to medium. On my Richard Binder line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below. And as the line variation, it has some really nice bounce to it. It's not a flex nib, but that number eight size, let's close up on this so you can see the amount of bounce. It's close to what you get out of a gold nib. I'm very, very pleased with the bounce in this big nib. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. It's not bordering on scratchy and very, very dry and thin. And for some quick writing. Very, very wet feed indeed, probably because of ebonite. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Lost in all the hype around the number eight size nibs is the reasoning for having a large nib in the first place. I think there are three reasons, visibility, distance, and proportions. Visibility is the ability to see the nib on the page when you're writing around the pen and your hand. Ask many Parker 51 users about the number one issue 
with the hooded nibs. It's not being able to see your nib on the page and whether you have the pen in the right orientation. Distance has to do with how high or how low you grip a pen and what your comfort zone is for how high your fingers are off the page. Proportions have to do with the visual aesthetics and whether the pen looks visually balanced. I think the Hongdian N10 is a beautifully designed and extremely well manufactured piston filling fountain pen. It just needs a number six size nib to make it perfect. Look at the proportions of the N10 versus the Jinhao 9019. The N10 just looks odd to me. That being said, the number eight size fine nib is very smooth, wet, and nicely bouncy on the page. As to which is best, the Jinhao or the Hongdian number eight size nib, they're both very nice and smooth with some nice bounce to them. I think the Jinhao is smoother on the page with less feedback, whereas the Hongdian feels more like a titanium nib on the page. Again, those are personal preference things. Some people like that amount of graphite pencil on vellum kind of feedback from a titanium pen, and some like the smoothness of, say, a pilot nib. Between them, I'd have to give the slight edge to the Hongdian nib because of that ebonite feed. But then that edge goes away because Jinhao makes theirs available in three sizes, E, F, F, and M, where I've only seen the fine nib from Hongdian. I should also mention that I've not included the Wingsung number eight size nib. Here it is on my Wingsung 630. I haven't included it here because it's like comparing apples and oranges. This is a 14 karat gold number eight nib, which is not dissimilar to the Mont Blanc 149 number eight or number nine size nib, whatever you want to call it. The 630 does come with a number eight size steel nib option, but I've never tried one and so cannot comment or pass judgment on it. But this number eight size gold nib is pretty awesome and I actually like it better than the Mont Blanc. But don't tell anyone. Let's just keep it between us. I don't want to rile up any snowflakes. And I promise to do a writing sample with the Jinhao 9019 as well. 9019 and this is a medium number eight steel nib and it's very wet and very smooth it doesn't have any of the feedback that the uh, Hongdian has and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and you can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and i guarantee i'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis badges sneak peek unboxing videos as well as early access to all of my videos the moment i upload them and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote I made this